Eli and Joe Emer back with you and ready to go for round one of the Alabama High School State Playoffs. Yeah, now if you're not familiar with the playoffs, here's how it usually works. Now, the losing team season is over <laughs> and the winning team's season continues. All right, Joe. Well, thanks for the lesson. And nonetheless, yeah, no we've got the uh, game of the week in a second. But first, here's a little bit of bonus coverage. This is a live look in at the lip right now. McGill has defeated Opelika, fourth-ranked McGill. Right there, that's head coach Bart Sessions talking with McGill's quarterback who's going to Alabama. They're celebrating on the field right now. They are headed to round two, Joe. Yeah, that was a great shot of those two talking, definitely saying good job and good luck. And Bart Sessions out there celebrating a victory tonight. We'll hear from him in just a little bit. Right now, it's time to check in on the first round showdown in Saraland. It's the Spartans versus Gulf Shores. Yeah, and the Dolphins are in the playoffs for the first time since 2009. Saraland has made three straight playoff appearances, but still looking for its first postseason win. Russell Colburn is holding down the fort in Spartan Stadium. Russell, what's up, buddy? Hey, Joe, uh, this one just went final. Sarah Land has got something done they have never done. They're in the second round of the playoffs now, and they've beaten Gulf Shores. Let's take a live look in on the celebration. we got the team shaking hands, showing sportsmanship. Coaches congratulating one another. But it will be Sarah Land moving on to play either Russell County, no relation, or Homewood. Let's get you to the highlights let you know how things have unfolded so far. We start with a recipe on how to make fried Oreos. The interesting thing about fried Oreos is not only are they delicious, but they're Joe Emer's second favorite food other than fried mayonnaise balls. Okay, Sarah Land's first position, Nick Williams, he's taking things over. He says, this is Sarah Land. 35 yards right side and in, seven to nothing. Spartans, Williams again, this one for more like midfield, 14 to nothing to that point. It looks like Sarah Land could be running away with this one early on. Jay Ward this time Mitchell Sanders deep down the sidelines that sets up a Chris Weaver touchdown run that's 21 nothing Sarah Land to that point but near the end of the second Sarah Land getting sloppy with the football Ward throws it to the flats that will be fumbled Gulf Shores has it inside the 10 from there Nathan Harris running quarterback very mobile he knows what to do with it 21 to 7 Gulf Shores they score again to make it 21 14 and then let's go uh, second half here Tyler Sims punt return for Sarah Land. He's got it down to the sidelines. The camera gets blocked with all the mayhem. 28 no, or 28 14, excuse me, Sarah Land to that point. But uh, Gulf Shore is with the ball on fourth down in the goal line. Harris will end up with it on a trick play, but it's not enough. At the end, Sarah Land wins 28 14, and they're moving on. Let's come back. We'll come back with a uh, post game reaction from this one. But for now, uh, live in Sarah Land, Russell Colburn, Fox 10 News, guys. All right. All right. Thanks, Russell. Now, last year, McGill Tulin lost a heartbreaker in the second round of the playoffs. That point, they were undefeated in the regular season. Now, the Yellow Jackets are it's safe to say they're looking to redeem themselves one year later. But no pushover in the first round tonight. Opelika did come in with three losses, but two of those defeats came from the top two teams in 6A. Okay, out to the lip we go. And here we have one of my boys, Chris Knowles, smiling for the camera. Thanks, bud. Here we go. First quarter here, McGill Harry Satterwhite finds a wide open Will Young in the end zone. Jackets would leave 7 to nothing there in the first quarter. Later now, Opelika not backing down. Steven Rogers, the Alabama commit, the out pass to Chantrez Tolbert, and he does work himself. Gets into the end zone from 38 yards. Bulldogs Jackets would be tied up 7-7. Later, McGill, first play in this drive. Check out Edo Smith and the move, baby. And he is gone. 86 yards. That boy can run. He's in for the touchdown. Jackets would lead there 14-2. Seven, but Opelika not going to go away. Here we go. Hand the ball off to Reginald Hall, and he'd be in for the touchdown. Tied up again, 14-14, just before halftime here. Clock winding down. Satterwhite to Will Young again. He reaches above everybody and brings it down. They would lead 21-14 at half. And like we saw earlier, McGill's going to come away with the win. Let's take a look at the final here by one point, 21 to 20. McGill beats Opelika. They would keep Opelika from converting a two-point conversion on their third touchdown there and win by one point. Now, Daphne hosted Wetumpka tonight. And let's take a look there. Daphne taking the field here at Trojan Stadium. And we have... 
the fireworks. Gotta love it. Zach Martin here finds Tyrone Harris. And he'll get a nice little gain it right oh. into uh, Hal Shurik there, our photographer. And later, here we go. Tolbert wide open in for the touchdown. Trojans would be on the board first seven nothing. Okay, but Tunk is going to strike back. Charlie Crenshaw takes the snap in the Wildcat, and he would turn it into a 35-yard touchdown for Wetumpka. Game is tied up with four seconds here left in the half. Trojan place kicker Dominic Brissoliar is going to get the field goal there, but let's take a look at the final. Daphne is going to fall to Wetumpka, and check out this second round matchup we're going to have here. Wetumpka is going to play McGill. Here we have it in the second round. McGill, even though they're ranked fourth, is going to be on the road at Wetumpka next Friday. Yeah, and later on in the show, we've got some bracketology for you, so stick around for that. All right, Blunt didn't just reach the playoffs. They did so with authority. Only one loss in the regular season, but tonight facing the high-powered Carver-Montgomery offense. Let's take a look at the highlights. You hear the Blunt band dancing in the stands. Some of the uh, most energetic bands in our area. Carver QB Mike McKinney finds Landy Capetillo put the ball down toward the other side of the field. Blunt would bring him down on the one yard line. That would set up a QB sneak by McKenney. Six points for Carver. They mixed, missed the extra point. So we move on early in the second quarter. Blunt with six of their own. Malik Campbell out to DeLorean Bethay who'll carry it in. Touchdown there. Now another nice drive by Carver. Blunt holds into a field goal. So not a whole lot of offense early in this one, but then Carver Montgomery started to pour it on and not looking good for the Leopards in the fourth, losing 31 to 12. All right, how about Pelham at Fairhope? <laughs> Trying to stay warm, that's junior Shelby Marston feeling the cold weather, but she's ready, warming up those mitts. Eight half minutes, eight half minutes, eight and a half minutes in the first quarter. Eight half minutes would be four minutes mathematically. Pelham's Morgan Sharp with a 60-yard run that opens the scoreboard with 7-0 on the score. Two minutes later, Fairhope's Lee Andrews with a 53-yard run all the way down for the touchdown. Two minutes later is the same as four half minutes. The math is awesome. Midway through the second half, Fairhope gets another chance. Setting up this play, it's Lee Andrews again. And this would follow it up. The touchdown by QB Stefan Jackson, 13 to 7. Sorry, Miss Jackson. Stefan is for real. 32 to 28. Fairhope in the lead before. All right, take a look at this. 6A playoff bracket. Fairhope trying to clean to that lead so they can advance to the second round. And we already learned that Blunt uh, struggling in that one. So most likely Carver Montgomery advancing as well. After the break, we're traveling across the state. Highlights from Foley at Prattville. Plus, 5A action. The number one team in the state, Spanish Fort, tries to advance one step closer to a championship. You're watching First and Ten.